These are the decks you can take to rank one legend right now. The first deck on this list is actually a deck that has absolutely taken the meta by storm and is going to be featured in one of my upcoming videos about how Zulok is not as simple as everybody thinks it is. But one thing to keep in mind is that Vile Library is very strong right now and I would not be surprised to see this card get slightly tweaked or potentially just straight up nerfed if it does go to 3 mana. If Vile Library goes to 3 mana, I think the deck becomes a little bit unplayable, but regardless, I think that this deck is very strong right now. Something that's really cool to point out is the fact that we're actually running Sire Denathrius, Gigafin, Kael'thas, as well as uh, Tamsin uh, Dreadlich in this deck in order to give this deck some sort of other ways of being able to play for late game and potentially being able to combo decks that are giving you a lot of uh, a lot of trouble, such as Shaman, for example, to the point where I am right now 9 and 5 with this deck currently. I actually have a decent win rate against Shaman because Sire Denathrius really does just change the way that you can play this deck to where if you have best case scenario against Shaman, Sire Denathrius in your hand and you have a bunch of imps that just die throughout the course of the game, Sire Denathrius is going to be able to deal uh, up to 30 damage depending on how easily you can juice up the minions. And something that's actually kind of cool, this is like absolute like best case scenario, if you have Kael'thas Sinstrider into double Murlocula when they are zero mana as well as one more one drop, then you can play uh, Kael'thas into Merlocula, play Gigafin. Gigafin will now have, uh, f there'll be four minions on the field total because he takes up two spots. You can play another Merlocula into a one drop, and then you can play Sire Denathrius for zero mana. So there are some theoretical cases to where if you can keep the perfect hand while you are just storming the board with minions, you can clear the board in one turn with Gigafin, and then OTK them with Sire Denathrius, all because of the Kael'thas combo. This is the absolute potential of this deck, but this is not going to happen nearly as frequently as you think. I almost did it one time in the uh, the 14 games that I was playing. But there's a lot of times to where Kael'thas into Merlocula Gigafin is just good enough to win if it's like turn five or turn six in the mirror match because if they can't do the same thing, then you've got this gigantic board that cannot be answered and you just go face and win the game. So I think that this deck actually has a lot of potential right now. And maybe if uh, if Vile Library gets nerfed, we have to go to more uh, of an aggressive build with Zulok. But it's also very popular on ladder and in the tournament right now, the upcoming Masters Tour. Uh, round 1 is currently happening right now as I'm recording this video, and I wanted to wait to see what their lineups were to see if my ideas for the top 5 decks are somewhat accurate. And I think I'm pretty spot on with these predictions. So let's move on to the next deck because I really do believe that Zulok is, this is the best deck for it right now. Next up is XL Control Shaman because I think that this deck is absolutely solid and not really much has changed with this list since it's uh, developed onto the meta. If I remember correctly, I think a lot of people just think that Murloc Holmes is not worth the uh, the struggle and it's not worth the uh, the effort, I guess, to really try to get the value out of that card when Wildpaw Caverns was literally getting cut from decks. And this is just simply better if you're trying to fight for tempo. I think this is the best way to just build this deck. I forget the other card that we uh, that we got rid of. I think we got rid of uh, yeah. We got rid of uh, an insatiable devourer so there's no longer two in this deck in some cases but if you want to be greedy against druid you could easily tech this in back in the deck just get rid of maybe uh you could get rid of wild paw caverns if you really want to but i would say it might be better to cut you could cut like a famished fool because there are some people that are thinking that this card is just not worth running two of in some situations uh some mages are running one of and we'll get to that deck here in a second but you could easily just take out the famished fool and put in another insatiable devourer in order to beat up some of the druids that you might be seeing on ladder or if you're seeing a lot of shamans on ladder this could also be very very effective but one thing that i want to point out with this deck is that it's just strong there are just so many like really strong techs that this deck has so many good swing turns and scam potentials with uh with null into uh into muck pools that just make this deck overall solid you've got murloc synergy you've got the battle cries like there's just there's so much going for this deck that it's literally the most popular deck on ladder and i'm pretty confident it was the most popular bring to the masters tour right now people are either going to aim to beat this or they're going to aim to ban it so on ladder you really can't stop them from beating you unless you are just going all uh, going all in to target uh, shamans so if you want to play the best deck in the meta right now this is probably the one to do it with 
Next up is the deck that I've had the most amount of success with. It is Non-Alignment Sire Denathrius Druid, and I think that this deck is the absolute nuts when the deck allows you to, uh, to be good. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? Pretty much Guff is the main way that you're going to be able to scam a lot of your games to where you just have ridiculous amount of Sire combos. But the thing I love about this deck is that even if you don't have Guff, you can still have the combo in the form of Kael'thas into Bran into Sire Denathrius. So even if you don't have like this epic setup in order to play your Denathrius when you have like 20 mana, you still have a way of being able to win the game just in case Guff is like the bottom... Uh, fifth card so that way your uh, aquatic forms can't reach it unfortunately so there's just one of these things to where the deck is has a lot of uh, ways of being able to be played uh ramp obviously is the name of the game you just go for wild growths you go for uh seedsman which is one of the best cards not only in standard but also in wild just to give druid a different way of being able to play for the late game alignment's a little bit more of a problem over there in wild but that's a conversation for a different day since we know that alignment is getting nerfed if you guys haven't heard this xr has already teased it on twitter and uh, expect something next week with alignment getting changed. So I would not recommend playing alignment druid unless you really just love the archetype. Uh, Theo, amazing card that has to go in almost every single one of these decks. If you have not crafted him right now, craft him now. He is definitely worth it, and I don't see him getting changed. If they change him to 5 mana, I'm going to be very upset, but again, I don't see that happening. Uh, but overall, this deck is just very, very powerful. Topior is amazing for Druid if you haven't uh, crafted him already. I would say this might be a safe time, but with balance patches coming up, if you, haven't, if you don't have that much dust... Maybe don't craft it, but this card actually does work, and there'll be a video coming out about this deck in the uh, next couple days uh, before the balance patches go out. I've got two videos I, I need to edit, so just, you know, tell me in the YouTube comments to edit more videos, Clark. I want to watch your content. Uh, but regardless, uh, Topio are really good because of the amount of uh, nature spells that you have in the deck. Kazakazan is actually pretty decent in the Shaman matchup. Uh, I've played him twice, and he actually did win one of those games, so... Doesn't seem the greatest because he's usually a dead card, but there are some times where Kazakasan can be useful in like the Druid matchup when you've just drawn a whole bunch. If you've got 20 mana, then there's just a lot of things that you can do and it's just more pressure. Uh, Malagos, absolute lifesaver. Uh, Alexstrasza is, you know, decent in the deck in order to set up for Denathrius, but Mali really just does hit home with the amount of spells that are in this deck and how frequently you need to draw cards in a 40 card deck. 100% core, you don't 100% need the Alex, but having additional dragons does help in order to have the Kazakusen value, in addition to the amalgams that are in the deck. Overall, I have gone, I believe, 16, and let me pull up the stats real quick, do 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 do, okay, 18 and 10, bam, 18 and 10 with this deck, and honestly, I feel like it's got a pretty good matchup against everything except Warlock. Warlock and extremely aggressive decks are hard to beat, but you can beat the Hunters of the world, so, I would just say that this is the most fair that Druid's ever felt in a minute. And if you're looking for a really cool deck with a lot of decision making and something to make Sire Denathrius extremely OP, this is the deck for you. And something else that I wanted to notice about this deck is that Gabby actually did bring a list like this to the Masters Tour, but instead he decided to cut out the Kazakasan and some other cards to put in Sea Giant and Devourer. So there's not that many dragons and there's more stuff that's fighting for the board, which maybe is the way to play this deck. Uh, I don't know of all the uh, exact changes from my list, but there's a lot more uh, emphasis on being able to draw cards with composting. There's a lot more nature cards in order to make Torpure absolutely a game breaking in some instances in order to remove any board that can uh, that can be generated still playing flipper friends uh playing thorn grown sentries in order to have something to do in the early game can make a lot of sense uh but again i have not played this list yet craft with caution but gabby would not bring this to a master's tour with thousands of dollars on the line without a good reason and i've actually been wondering about running insatiable devourer myself because in the shaman matchup when this card comes down you don't really have a lot of ways of being able to deal with it as a druid so this this list might be worth your time or your effort uh, if you're looking to run something that's a little bit unconventional. And honestly, I think composting might be a card that's really good in this deck, but I'm a little bit scared to test it out because I really like to go for greed and I love dragons. But this is probably the next deck on my uh, on my playlist. The next archetype is Spooky Mage, and notice how I said archetype instead of deck because I am very conflicted on the decks that I feel like I should show you for Spooky Mage. I really just don't know what the best version of this deck is, but I'm going to be honest, I think it's a 30 card mage that's going to be the best way to play this deck. I, I, I got so much hype around the XL mage, and I have a list that I will show you, so I'm not giving up on it yet. 
but I do believe that 30 card mage is just the best way to play this because cycle is very important in this deck and consistency is sometimes an issue if you do not hit the uh, the proper cards like magister in order to start pressuring your opponent like the ping package is how we actually kill them and I have uh, I had somebody on my stream the other day be like why are we playing the skeletons in a deck where the ping package is just the best because they complement each other perfectly in my opinion. You have, you know, the ping package you want to actually deal damage and kill them and removal with Reckless Apprentice and potentially uh, if with Bran with a, with a deck we will show with that in a minute. Uh, you have Re Reckless Apprentice combos for board clear. You have ways of being able to generate minions that fight for the board and actively remove the board while, uh, while they die. So that is just good for defensive purposes. You have cards that gain armor in some instances. You have Magister, which can replay some of these cards in order to just absolutely dominate. Like, there's, there's just a lot of synergies with this deck that cannot be denied to where running both packages just makes sense. However... Gabby, going back to the Gabby lists, is running something that I've actually haven't seen before to where we're not even running KT in the deck. This is I'm not even showing this because this is Gabby, haha, ha, Gabby's best player in the world. This is the very first time that I've actually seen a list that doesn't run the Mordresh. Going back to the idea, why do we play the Skeletons if we're just going to play the Ping Package? Again, because these these cards complement each other so well, you're just not using KT as the ultimate finisher anymore, you're just using your Mordresh. So, I can kind of understand this approach a little bit, to where I think that Skeleton Mage is probably not going to be touched all too much, To and we can, you know, talk about these more after the balance patch actually does go live. But overall, this deck does make a lot of sense, you've got a removal that builds a board. Gabby doesn't like the idea of Blizzard, which is a card that has been making its way into some of these spooky mage decks. Uh, but overall, the rest of the deck is kind of well established. There are some people that think that Shivering Sorceress is pretty good to potentially give you uh, turn five Deathborn, uh, turn three Cold Case, turn two Arcane Intellect. That is huge. Uh, but here's one more thing I want to show you about this archetype in case you want to do something a little bit different. This is the most interesting list that I have seen pop up on the XL uh, Spooky Mage, and it's because it runs Rune of the Archmage, as well as Blizzard, and a Grey Sage pair. We're not running two of them, but we are running one of them. So this is kind of interesting that we, uh, we have teched these kind of cards in order to help with the late game survivability. And we still have, like, you know, a bunch of freeze cards. Like, we have, uh, we... <laughs> Varden Blizzard gives you three turns of stall. You even have Solid Alibi in this deck, which I believe was also in the Gabby list, which I'm not really sold on Solid Alibi, but its power cannot be ignored if you're just literally trying to stall for a few turns. And if your opponent has seven minions on the field, that's just seven damage. It, it, it's undeniable how good this card can be in some situations. I just... I just question its consistency when you're not really looking to stall the game you're looking to kill them and this card just becomes a dead draw in some situations i don't know i'm not sold on it quite yet but i think that this deck is very very interesting because it does run uh the scam mage package which we're been we're beginning to see more scam mages evolve onto the meta and there are some that were brought to the masters tour but I'm not sold on Scam Mage quite yet because I haven't played the list. But if you're looking for a 40-card mage to try out, I think this list is very interesting. And it might be worth your time. But just know that Spooky Mage is probably not going to get nerfed all too much. So I think that it's a safe investment to go for this. And if any of the cards get changed, you get your dust back. And the last deck that I'm going to feature in this video is actually not Quest Priest at all because it's Quest Hunter. You automatically know me. I do not highlight this deck unless I absolutely have to admit that this deck is good. And unfortunately, Face Hunter is starting to go to the wayside to make room for Quest Hunter. Yay! Let's give it for Quest Hunter. I hate this deck so much. Overall, the reason why this deck is good is because it's still doing the exact same thing that Quest Hunter was good at, dealing a bunch of damage, but the Wild Seeds filled out its weaknesses almost perfectly. Like... Once I explain to you why the Wild Seeds are really good, it's just going to make sense to, like, realize to, like, why Quest Hunter was lacking in some situations and in some matchups. But now it just feels like it's good into almost everything. To where I think Alignment Druid and maybe some other, like, greedy decks like Druid, like, that getting a lot of armor or maybe kill you quickly are the ways to beat Quest Hunter. But now that Quest Hunter has access to Rush Minions to taunt minions for defense as well as a proactive weapon that can either go face or trade in order to in order to set up for whatever your hand is i just think that this is just 
it's just undeniable how strong this deck is and you can literally see it in my heart and in my soul that I don't want to admit this but the wild seeds really do work in this deck almost perfectly and the only thing I see nerfing uh, the only thing that I see being nerfed in hunter is maybe wild seeds going to four because there was some conversation in development that this card was originally four mana but I don't see many changes happening to hunter it's probably going to still be good but there you have it. Those are the five best decks to be playing right now if you want to hit rank one legend. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if you think that my uh, take is correct or if you end up picking up one of these decks yourself because I would love to know if I helped you guys out. Hopefully the information in this video was somewhat helpful to you and we'll see you for the next video.